They don't call me under the magician just because I wear a funny cut. How much now? Uh, 23.52. How much I saved? Uh, 11.24. Nice. Chryso friends, welcome back to Opus LNI, where we make things other than SCA garb. Even when it's another London hood. Yes, another London hood. But with a twist this time. As you may remember, partner plays not only in the SCA, but also in a buffer larp called AmpGuard. I tend to only ever play peripherally there. I am not the game's target audience, but I have a lot of friends who play, so I like to go hang out with them. AmpGuard also tends to be more fantasy oriented and less strictly historically plausible than the SCA, which makes for a lot more design leeway when planning projects. So when my friend Jenna reached out to me to ask if I would make a specific item of regalia for her spouse Harold on short notice, I was like, of course, yes. In AmpGuard, when you reach a certain level of proficiency in a particular activity, you're formally recognized to have reached mastery of said activity. And as part of that masterhood, you're given a master hood. Different areas of expertise get different colors of hood, blue for mastery and costuming, purple for excellence and service, and so on. And no matter what their base color, they all have a gold phoenix on them somewhere. A herald was slated to be recognized as a master of battle for excellence in fighting tactics and designing or executing battle game scenarios. The battle master hood color is tan, and Jenna had a very specific phoenix design in mind. Yes, it's a Pokemon, which if you know Harold is freaking perfect. When she sent me the image though, I was a little apprehensive. The turnaround time was tight and I was worried that the expectation would be for an embroidered or appliqued execution. But I had just used my silhouette cameo to cut several matching stencils for a project of partners and I thought the cell shading of the Pokemon's design lent itself really well to a series of layered stencils. Luckily, Jenna was on board and we were off to the races. So everyone go grab your cuppa. Today is pretty darn warm because it's late April and that's basically midsummer in Texas. So I am drinking frozen raspberry from David's Tea, iced instead of hot. It is a delightful raspberry blend that isn't bitter or too sour despite having both hibiscus and rose hips in it. Let's get into it. Normally when I make a hood with a motif on it, I pattern it along the lines of the Skjöldahem hood since the square in the front makes a nice blank canvas for decoration. But Jenna told me that Harold was moving away from a more Viking silhouette, so instead I'm going to alter the Londinium hood pattern to get rid of the front seam. The first step is to trace off a clean copy of the hood without the dags, so I can alter it non-destructively. I will move the gusset slit back by about half an inch to give myself a little bit more room in the front. Then I'm going to draw a line from the edge of the neckline curve to the bottom of the original gusset slit. I'll then trace out the front triangle, adding an inch to the straight sides to account for both seam allowances. I actually ended up just cutting this piece on the fold so I didn't have to trace out both sides. Oh well.
After the pattern pieces are cut out, I'll transfer them to the fabric, a linen rayon blend. I didn't bother to retrace the side gussets onto new paper since they're the same. As per usual, before I drag out the machine, I'll set the tops of both side gussets. The front gusset isn't set into a slit in the fabric, so I'll just add that while I'm sewing all the seams. Okay, now I can drag out the machine. The assembly is straightforward, just sewing the pieces together with a half inch seam allowance. Once that is finished, I will fill all of the seam allowances by trimming down one side of the seam, folding the other side over the first, and whip stitching it flat against the hood material. This fabric frays like mad, so I prioritize doing this step before anything else. The Lyra pipe seam was just surged, since it's not visible.
Thank you to all of my current and continuing Kofi members, especially my newest members, Cupcake and Professor Stitchwitch. Your support and the support of all of my members and croissants makes it easier to do what I do and to provide quality content for everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break to see how I make the stencil. Now onto the stencils. Each layer will be cut separately on a piece of freezer paper I've cut to US letter size. And this is the secret to making crisp stencils. Freezer paper is coated on one side with a thin layer of plastic that, when placed against fabric and iron, will adhere long enough and well enough to make a fantastic stencil and then peel off with no lingering residue. I'm using Photoshop to isolate an outline of each layer. The first layer will be the lightest color, in this case white, and serve as a base for all the other layers. The next will be yellow, and so on. I'm also taking care to make a registration mark to be sure that each layer lines up properly. After all the layers have been isolated into their own shapes, I will import them into the Silhouette software and use the shapes to define the cutting lines. Each sheet is then put on a special cutting mat and run through the machine one by one. All of the floating bits that don't touch the outer part of the stencil are held in place with painter's tape until they are ironed down. You could absolutely draw or print the design onto the paper side of the sheet and then cut it out with an X-Acto or rotating craft blade. You don't need a Silhouette or a Cricut in order to do this. The next step is ironing the freezer paper onto the front hood gusset, marking the registration triangle with a friction pen, and then painting the first layer. I'm using a sponge for this step to ensure full coverage, but I'll switch to a brush later. The paint is one half craft acrylic paint and one half fabric medium. This keeps the finished product from being too stiff.
Before I iron on the yellow layer, I'll mark the registration triangle with a running stitch so I don't accidentally erase the friction pen. Then I just have to clean up the marks and paint in the rest of the layers. Any inconsistencies will be cleaned up with a thin brush after peeling away the stencil. The last step is to paint the black outline, which took me approximately forever, which is coincidentally the same length as three episodes of Midsummer Murders. After the painting is done, there's only the hemming to finish, and I'm all done.
that's it for today's video. Thanks for coming along with me. I hope you enjoyed watching the process of making Harold's Battle Masterhood. It was a fun project to work on, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And more importantly, Harold loved it too. If you're interested in making your own medieval or fantasy clothing, be sure to check out some of my other videos on the channel. Let me know in the comments how you would use stencils in your work. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want notifications, click on the little bell and consider sharing this or any of my videos to social media. If you're interested in finding me on said social media, I am at Opacel and I everywhere, and those links, as well as the link to my coffee, will all be in the description box below. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Boil.